good game. I think we knew there might be some injuries, significant injuries in, yeah. in the squad. Um, with both Aaron and Brennan out as well, A, just can you explain the nature of the injuries, maybe how close they were to being selected, if at all, and also the, how serious the injuries are? Not too serious, I don't think, but unfortunately it puts them out of this camp, both players. So, yeah, um, it is a blow for us. They are big players for us, obviously. Um, Aaron's probably playing the most relaxed, best football he's played because he is in a, in a relaxed um, place at this moment in time and so that is a uh, an added blow for us but um, Brennan as well yeah he's picked up an injury um, to what level we, we still don't know yet but we know that that it rules him out of this camp unfortunately so um, we are quite strong in those positions Geraint so we've we saw with Brooksy having the influence he had when he came on against Latvia and, and the importance he played replacing Rambo on that night and scoring the, the all-important second goal for us so as people like H playing in the Prem um, you know Brooksy would want to play more minutes, but the quality that he's got, Kiefer's not playing as many minutes, but we know what his record is like playing when he puts the Welsh jersey on. So um, we'll, we'll still be OK, but of course, the, the big players that we're going to miss. I, I, I don't know if it was a temptation at all with you, your discussions with the medical teams in Cardiff City as well, but it's 4th of October, that Croatia game's 15th of October. Was there any chance yeah. that Aaron's... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we always try. We always try to get as much time as we possibly can and delay it. But, you know, it's, it's, it's out of the question, absolutely, for both players. Um, just in terms of... <clears throat> you, you mentioned there the other players. How much of a boost was that game in Latvia? And, you know, you, yeah. you brought Aaron off very early on in the second half there. David Brooks on. It was a, a magnificent second half performance. How much of a confidence boost, morale boost, momentum boost, was that victory and that performance in Latvia? Well, it was, and it was off the back of a very good performance against South Korea as well. You know, we knew we had to suffer without the ball. We knew they're a good team, similar to, to Croatia in many respects with how they're going to keep the, the team, the percentage of possession that they have in, in games. So that, for me, was a very disciplined defensive performance, which I called the players out on. We had some uncomfortable meetings in that week, um, and they more than... Um, you know, put right the wrongs of, of June for me then in that reaction. And then we took the momentum of that um, and worked on the other side of the game, which was the attacking side, creating more chances. My only criticism after the Latvia game was that when you create that many chances, we've got to be a bit more ruthless and clinical. So that's the next stage in the development, and we're hoping to see that now against uh, uh, Gibraltar on Wednesday evening. So obviously you've got the Gibraltar game, but the focus, again is on Croatia because of what you've done now with that yeah. result and the way the other, you always said results would look keep your eye on the other results as well and it's all concertinaed um, how what do you need against Croatia what would you what would be acceptable for you so that Wales are still in the mix for automatic qualification well it'll depend on the other results as well I think uh, Croatia play Turkey before our game so we'll know the outcome of that before before we play Croatia ourselves we go into every game wanting to win so that'll be the, that'll be the game plan. We'll go. We'll want to go and win the game. If we get a point, it won't be the worst result in the world. Mm -hmm. If you know results have gone for us as well, so we we can't we can't plan for a draw. Again, we'll we'll be going out to win the game, and uh, we've shown our intent when we played them away from home. There's not many result teams go there and get results against them, uh, and we did. We were one of them, so I think they'll respect us for that. And um, it's about following that level of performance up now on Sunday. Um, but like I said, we'll, we'll be going for the win, irrespective of, the, of the, the, the injuries we've had. We've still got enough in the team there from a forward line perspective anyway to go and create chances against them. Um, just a quick question before, before I hand over, uh, Rob. Today, you know, we know this, the, the, the bid for Euro 2028 yeah. is, is next Tuesday. Official confirmation now, Turkey have pulled out. So it's a sole, sole bid going from the UK and Ireland, which Wales are, are a big part of it. Just how big... A tournament could this be for the UK and Ireland, but also for Wales if the bid is successful, which we think will be next Tuesday. Yeah, if it when if and when it's confirmed next Tuesday, um, we'll speak in in more detail about it then when it's when it's absolutely confirmed. But of course, it's going to be fantastic for Welsh football, isn't it, to have that level of standard being played in our country um, and give the opportunity for supporters to go and see teams, great teams play, yeah, is a is a bonus. So. Um, Next week, we'll go into more detail when we have it confirmed. And just the last one from me, three letters, VAR. It's raised its head yeah. again. It affects yeah. domestic football, international football. Yeah. Are you a fan? And if you are, what needs to be done to make it foolproof so that it, you know, it's meant to stop clangers? Well, it is. It's, a, it's there to make the referee's life a little bit easier, isn't it? So 
you know, I, I was as gobsmacked as everybody else watching it unfold. Um, it, 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 it beggars belief, it really does. You know, I think where they, where they messed up really was they should have stopped it. They should have stopped. And for that next five, ten minutes, as uncomfortable as, as it would have been for them, the right thing would have been done. Whereas now, by allowing play to continue and go on, there should never have been any grey areas. There should have been a clear instruction. Yes, offside. Yes, goal. No goal. It's, it's got to be a clear instruction. And, and they should have been brave. And that next five, ten minutes, they would have taken a lot of criticism, but it would have been done, and the right thing would have been done. Whereas to let it play on, and now it's created a, the storm that it's turned into, is, um, yeah, uh, time again, I think they should, should have been braver to make that decision. Cheers, Gannon. Hi, morning, Rob. Hi, Rob. Um, on Aaron Ramsey, Errol Bullitt said last night he didn't think he would need an operation, or hasn't had one yet. What's your understanding of just how bad the injury is? Well, to, to even be mentioning surgery means it's, it's a significant injury. Um, I know Aaron. There's, and and w when you have, I've, I've had injuries myself in my career, and there's always an alternative. There's always let it heal naturally or, or go down the surgery uh, route. And perhaps Aaron's age maybe would have played a factor as well. Does he really want to, to be recovering from surgery after that and, and go through that process? So I think if there's always an option to heal naturally, I, I would personally take that myself as well. So there's always going to be two options, and, and I get why he's, he's gone down the natural healing option. And is there any part of you that fears he might be not just missing for these two games, but for the November games as well? As you understand it, do you expect him to be back ready for the November games for Wales? Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything um, other than that, Rob, if I'm honest. I don't think there's going to be a... Uh, a spell of, of games going beyond November that he's going to miss. So we're confident that we can get him back for, for November's camp, um, providing how well he heals. You know, we don't know, do we? We don't know how these things, he might get to a certain point and then, and then have a setback. So we'll have to wait and see. And on Brennan Johnson again, how serious is it? Because it, he keeps picking up these injuries, doesn't he? Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, it, it's not a serious one, but unfortunately the timing dictates this and and you know if he's not if he's not going to be right for for spurs then you know we it's not fair for us to pick him and, and try to play him so um it's not a long one it's not a serious one but it puts him out of this camp unfortunately and and he's been he's been great for us you know i asked him to play a different way in latvia i asked him to play as a number nine and uh, and i thought some of his movement was was incredible he created a chance after 30 seconds with ethan playing him down the side um and he rose to the challenge for me so Again, disappointment to, to lose him, but there's others now that will step up. Tom Lockyer returns, hopefully avoiding injury this time. Yeah. Um, a Premier League defender now. Yeah, and he's been outstanding, hasn't he? You know, the, the goal he scored against Everton is, is... I don't think I've ever seen a, a picture of him at the minute without a black eye. You know, he's, that's, that's him at the minute. He's, he's willing to put his head in. Um, we know him as a, a, a combative centre-back, uh, and he's a great addition to the squad. And you've got two players who are relatives, are really well known, Charlie Savage, son of you know who, <laughs> your namesake, <laughs> and uh, Owen Beck, uh, yeah. connected with Ian Rush. Um, what does this say about those two? What have you got to say about those two? What have I got to say about them two? They're, they're, they're showing a lot of potential. Um, the benefits of having training camps with our under-21s is that we can stagger training and when our training is finished, me, the players, the staff, we walk over and we watch them train and if there's any that we think are ready for that next level, and I'm in close contact with Matty as well, then we'll give them that opportunity to train with us and you know, we, we've done it with a couple of players and every time they've stepped up and, and trained with us, they've impressed. So this for me now is the perfect opportunity to one show support is what we've got coming through, but for me to have a closer look at them and work with them. So we're gonna have three days on grass working with them and then give them this opportunity to play a, a first team competitive game for Wales. Rob been in touch? Numerous times, <laughs> can't get him off the phone. Yeah, I've had to tell him, stop texting me. I know he's doing okay. <laughs> you, know, you know what he's like, Rob, he's, he's very enthusiastic, he's very keen. Um, yeah, but uh, Charlie can take care of himself, I know that. And, and he's, look, look at what Rob went through when he left Man United years ago to, to get a career for himself going to crew. No different for, for Charlie. Um, I've been in contact with Charlie over the last few months and, and said, in my opinion, he needs to go out now to play competitive football if he wants to get a career and if he wants to play international football. He's taken that advice on board. He's gone out to Reading, he's playing, he's scoring goals and he was on standby for us in September and he now, the next step for him in his development is 
is exposing him to it and giving him this opportunity. He's deserved it. Will Wales fans finally see Luke Harris in action? Well, yeah, that's the plan. That's why he's, he's involved in the squad. So, yeah, he's, um, he's another young one that we've got coming through, showing potential. And, again, another great opportunity for him to get minutes. Um, so, yeah, looking f I'm looking forward to the game. I really am looking forward to the game. Different to September because, you know, there's loads of positives surrounding this one. It gives us an opportunity to now play these, these younger players um, and give them that experience of being around our group. And you're in Wrexham announcing this yeah. squad. How big is it that you're bringing this game to Wrexham? It's massive for us. You know, on, on behalf of the players, we want to thank all the, the North Whalian supporters and, and the, the travel up and down the country for us. You know, uh, uh, we've played a lot of the games in Cardiff and it's been well documented. And, but to, to come up to Wrexham and show them that respect and, and give them an opportunity to, to be at Ormond and let us do the travelling is just a small price for us to pay. So we're looking forward to it. It's, it was the home of football when I was growing up, Rob. Um, I know I've watched many an international year, whether it be on the telly with, with Russia, Mark Hughes. And so it's the home of Welsh football. Um, so for us to come back up and, and play a game is, is, is exciting for us. Cheers. Anyone else? OK. Well, uh, yeah, given sorry. Given we are in Wrexham, I mean, you can't really talk about Wrexham without mentioning Paul Mullen these days. I mean, what's your consideration <laughs> about him, especially given two fantastic goals he scored against Crewe on Saturday? Yeah, well, Mullen is on standby. He's on standby for the squad. So um, that's an area that, obviously, with Brennan being out, um, Bradders has got a little bit of a knock. Hopefully, he's not going to be too concerning. We've got Kiefer, but he's not playing minutes. Um, outside of that, we've not got any real nines. Um, I watched Paul play against Sheffield United in the Cup. Jack Lester, who was my coach that I brought in from Sheffield United, has nothing but praise for him as a player. Um, we've been in. We've had a few conversations about him. So the next step for Paul now is that he's on standby and he's he's one step away. Um, we monitor we monitor Welsh players up and down the country, and if they're scoring goals, whatever level, we'll take note. Um, and he's certainly one that we've we've taken note of. And uh, uh, and yeah, and, and he deserves that now. Uh, but it's just the next step in his in his development, knowing letting people know that we are, you know, prepared and, and willing to um, to select him. Okay. Um, well, we'll do the written press here, and uh, then if you want to set up.